A warm welcome to the audience and to my great panel. Uh, my name is Hanna Nova Beatrice. I am a design writer and also work as editor-in-chief of a Swedish title called uh, Residence Magazine, focusing very much on the uh, uh, Swedish market, of course, but also the Scandinavian uh, market. Um, it's an interiors magazine that also takes in uh, design and architecture. And uh, in today's panel discussion, focusing on uh, Scandinavian design, uh, it's part of the Stockholm Design Talks, uh, which over overall title is Moving Forward. And earlier on today, we uh, talked uh, about the power of Scandinavian design with four producers. And now it's time for uh, the point of view from the designer. So first, I would like my panel to shortly introduce themselves, uh, their names and what they do and how they work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Peter Bongard. I'm from uh, Copenhagen. I have, uh, with my partner, Sina Bensler, we have a company called Space Copenhagen. And we have sort of two uh, areas of expertise. We do architecture and small-scale project work, and then we do design-oriented work, especially furniture and light design. My name is Frederick Poulsen, and um, I'm based here in Stockholm. Uh, I am a furniture designer, and I'm very interested in um, experimenting with the surfaces and how to color wood and uh, construct furniture out of that. And I also make uh, interior design projects. Uh, my name is Andreas Ingesik. Uh, I have my own studio in Oslo. Um, I focus on... Um, uh, yes, what do I focus on? I focus on furniture and accessories and textiles and, and uh, yeah, different categories within the field of objects. My name is Anja Septon and I'm based in Stockholm. I have a design studio here and I work with three companies that are based in Sweden. It is Lamholtz Furniture that works a lot with contract furniture. I work with Abstracta and Asplund, which is more like a home environment company. Uh, I wanted to go uh, straight on with a very direct question uh, to define what uh, Scandinavian design is today, 2014. Is could you do you think we could um, there is a certain Scandinavian design aesthetic? And I want to start with you, Anya. Um, definitely, you can definitely see the heritage from what Scandin uh, Scandinavian design uh, stands for. But in the same way, it's um, kind of a crossover because uh, today's designer are quite influenced by international design and it's more of a mixed up. Uh, but you can definitely see the heritage into what Scandinavian design stands for in today's design. What do you think, Andreas? Can you look at the product and say, wow, this is definitely a Scandinavian <coughs> product? Um. I guess so. Uh, I think um, the field of design is in Scandinavia are very strong, and I think the impact the, um, that the Scandinavian field of design has is going to be is very strong and is going to grow stronger in the, like um, the next 10, 20 years. I think, but I think also yes, most of the time I can see or recognize some Scandinavian features. Or and is that ideas. because it's something the producers also f you know, put forward, or is it coming from the designers themselves? Uh, difficult. Uh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, I think uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes it is very obvious, um, or it, it bears a clear signature from the designer, uh, him or herself. Uh, but I think... Um, also, you can see that from certain manufacturers, but I think um, uh, it's, it's a well. It's a <laughs> it demands a long, <laughs> long answer. Yes, I think uh, it, it, it can be both things, really. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, Frederick, you uh, how you, I mean you studied uh, and graduated uh, not too long ago from RCA in London. How how do you see the uh, could you do you when you walk around here today? Do you think there's a Scandinavian design aesthetic looking at the what's being produced? Definitely, I think uh, when I walk around here, I think it's um, everything is very very functional. Um, and I think uh, that we value functionality uh, in, in, in put that in very, very high regards. Mm. And um, uh, sometimes it can be um, nostalgic in one sense, but with uh, with the modern twists mm. and with uh, with a high sense of of, of uh, high quality in manufacturing. So that is what I see when, I, mm. when I'm thinking about the mm. Scandinavian. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think about as an aesthetic and, and why, uh, why do you see it the way it is today? Well, I think that uh, when you look at it, there's also it's, it's sort of in a, a transition phase, you mm. could sort of say. Because for a long time, we sort of had this great heritage of the Scandinavian design tradition. And without associations to a certain look, to a certain feel. And I, I find that you know during the time that we've been practicing, but also during the whole educational uh, part that we undergo as designers, it, it was sort of difficult to to take a step away from that sort of aesthetic. It was a certainly you know it had to be light oak. There were certain icons of Scandinavian furniture that were sort of had a almost dogmatic approach to how shapes should be. And what I found about the moment is that. And it's sort of uh, like you say. It's sort of there's, there's certain uh, there's a reminiscent of of where we come from, but it's it's also looking in new directions where there's a certain unpredictability also uh, at last uh, appearing on the scene, uh, uh, stage. And I, I think you can see it. You can see there are some companies that are sort of uh, very market driven and and you don't see very many surprises from them. But on the other hand, uh, you can also see new producers emerging that, that sort of uh, also challenge what it is uh, you can do with furniture based on a Scandinavian sort of insight. Mm -hmm. and, and slowly I think you can see that that certain variations and certain uh, free thinking is, is, is starting to appear. That still feels very Scandinavian, but it looks different, finally. Mm -hmm. You no longer <laughs> have to work with a certain guideline. It's um, a much more free environment to work in. Mm. It's more acceptable mm. to kind of cross over the line in between Scandinavian design into the international field. Mm. But also, as, as, as you noted before, there's a certain, uh, the time we live in is definitely very different. I mean, mm. everybody travels a lot. We're influenced cross-cultural in a much more higher mm. sense. So it's, it feels like a hybrid. Mm. It, it's sort of Absolutely. Scandinavian to a certain degree, but then it picks up a note mm. that might be from anywhere mm. in the world mm. or even in history. Mm. It could mm. also be you know, a design move that you're seeking back a century or something. So, so it's but evolving into completely different things. Yeah, but common for it is the measurement of quality and craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. So that one is um, definitely the line that you can see the similarity from. Mm -hmm. as but well. Andreas, you have, um, uh, I mean, you were one of the founders of, of uh, Norway SES and you've worked with many uh, different uh, Scandinavian producers, also international, but I'm thinking, how, how do you feel being labeled uh, a Scandi designer. Do you feel <laughs> super comfortable with that? Um, I think uh, it's not a problem really, but I think um, it I'm quite proud of being a part of the Scandinavian field and, uh, and the Scandinavian mindset. But I can also see that um, uh, when you have been around in the business for a while, it's um, it's not so important for me to have like uh, to forefront my own signature. I think it is more um, important to um, to enter the role of the manufacturer and try to uh, to work together to create like the best product for the manufacturer. Um, I think that's very important. So I, I guess my my expression is is um, becoming more and more diverse in a way. Um, but on the other hand, I think it's like um, uh, I, th I think that the Scandinavian signature is, is is probably there, and and I think with that, of course, we 
the way we are brought up in Scandinavia are very important in, in uh, uh, and it shows in what mm. we do in our knowledge about materials and function and everything I <coughs> I gave my son an axe a fiskars axe it's uh, like this long very sharp when he was seven and uh, incredibly dangerous but he knows how to use it yeah and um, and the the kids they are in the sailboat and in the winter cabin and I think that we all have all this knowledge and experience mm. that gives us a certain um, um, uh, certain sensitivity in mm. terms of material and function, mm. and that's quite unique. Mm. So I, I think uh, I, I like the Scandinavian stuff, even though it, it, it is a bit academic and boring sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you comfortable being labeled a Scandinavian designer? Well, yeah, we've I think uh, the both of us are, are quite comfortable working. And it's something uh, when we do this kind of thing or do interviews, it's it's something that everybody asks to. It also s it also seems at the moment that the Scandinavian trend is something people are very interested in. But the honest answer is we don't think very much about it. No. Uh, as as you said, it's 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 there anyway. We are Scandinavians. There's a, there's a certain way of life. There's a certain structure to society. A certain way of thinking. And with that, an approach to how you sort of travel in the world within your own mind and in exterior relations when you see, when you notice things, when you mm. pick up color, tone, space, light. There's certain things w we, we don't have to think that much about it, actually. It's a reflex. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think you have it uh, with you when you go into the design process, and then I also agree with you. And so you can kind of trust it, and that, mm -hmm. that leaves sort of the space for you as an individual or as a team mm -hmm. to go in and find your own sort of platform to stand on and try to elaborate that into an expression that, that you feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. where you're, you're, you're trying to do something and not, not necessarily knowing exactly what you're looking for. And th that, that I really think is a, is, a, is a good thing that's happening to the design environment right now, is that uh, we don't have to deliver the cliché anymore. No, no, uh, we, we can sort of uh, finally s try to, to develop new ways mm -hmm. of seeing it and still feel Scandinavian. Uh, when we had the panel discussion with the producers today, um, um, Renato from uh, uh, Discipline, uh, he said, um, an Italian brand, he said when he founded the company that he wanted to create uh, an Italian brand, but uh, um, Scandinavian design with Italian pasta sauce. And <laughs> because, <laughs> because of uh, all the big changes that has happened in the design industry in the last 10 years, mm. there's a renewed interest mm. in the Scandinavian design yes. scene. And can you... Uh, have you felt it in, in, in terms of how you work? Is the producers, both internationally, uh, looking more closely at you as designers because we are based here and being very professional in a certain kind of way? Uh, or has it affected you, you know, ha m with all the more producers uh, interested in your work? Well, I, I think... I'm uh, thinking especially of the da Danish scene, which is really flourishing with the uh, <coughs> young design brands. Well, there, there are certain combination of things that are happening that sort of affect each other, and uh, and uh, to to the uh, the short answer is definitely yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a collaboration with a Japanese Chinese company, and their brief was that uh, they wanted to do uh, a range of furniture that was for the Asian market. Mm -hmm. But what they wanted was that they wanted uh, a Scandinavian design team to sort of look at classic. Asian motifs mm. within the furniture di tradition and, and use sort of our mechanism of filtering, mm. peeling layers off to, to see what will come out. So, so kind of combining mm. uh, an Asian flavor mm. uh, with a way of working that, that is specifically sort of Scandinavian in a way. But is it a good sales pitch like for the producers, do you think? Do, you, do they use it? This is Scandinavian design, Scandinavian designers, Nordic. I, is it a good sales pitch as well? As yeah. a measurement of um, good quality, probably, yeah. But in the same way, I think that producer is looking for someone that they can communicate with because as a designer it's not just the work you do by yourself it's the communication with the company that you're working with that in the end will last with a good product mm. so but how how I do you feel say that they are looking for just a Scandinavian designer 
How do you feel the, the design scene in Sweden in particular has changed since you graduated? Because you went straight to start to work very closely with, with, with the companies. Um, what is interesting is, I mean, quite a lot of the younger designers are opening up their own production. Mm. And um, they have so many fields to work with. Mm. In the same way, it's quite hard because it's such an open field, so people get more and more informed about what you do. So you really need to be very selective of what material you will choose, how sustainability mm. will uh, reflect on you, and so on. So it's a more open scene for the young yes. designers. And you have the web shops, and you mm could reach out and find producers in other way that you could from before. So a new way of thinking, that is probably the mm. biggest change mm. from when I graduated. Mm. Mm. And Frederick, looking at the, the way you work, you've, you've, uh, h how is the design scene, work, the industry mm. working for you? And how have you decided um, to work um, based in Sweden? I've been, si since I graduated, uh, uh, I, I studied in London and then shortly after I graduated I moved back to Stockholm and in London there was this uh, very um, what's it, vibrant design scene like a lot of shows going on around town all the time and there were it was very uh, like a community amongst designers young designers and established designers and when I got back to Stockholm it, I didn't really feel that vibrant um, it was very focused on, on the week of the fair, but, and this was 2010, and in only yeah, four years now, <laughs> almost, it's been, I can tr truly feel that there is uh, much more lively and, and, and open. And, mm. and, uh, and why um, is that? No, I think it's because of, of, uh, of that the designers are feeling uh, mu much more confident mm. in, their own, uh, in their own practice. Mm rather than um, like being, being passive and wait for, uh, for uh, to be picked up yes. or for, sh for the chance to, to work with a manufacturer. Instead, you know, we <laughs> as young designers uh, can actually, okay, but uh, I can take an active role mm. here. I can, I can produce my, I can build my own prototype. I don't need another one mm. building my prototype no, and true. maybe doing it. I can, I can make my own prototype and claim that it's a, it's a product. Mm. So in that sense, it's, it's, you take a more active role. And that, that kind of feeds the more um, mm. m m more. But it's interesting, how, how have you worked uh, since you came here? I'm thinking also mm. about the Ernstberg-Sakona, which is a typical example mm. of, uh, of taking an active role. Yes. No, but um, when we first did the, the Ernstberg-Sakona, and it, we, we wanted to create a, a group show to to collect uh, you know what's what's going on now and and to kind of um, establish a, a platform to uh, f for designers that are act actually taking an active role themselves producing their own things or or people that are you know very skilled craftsmen that uh, that I see as as design as as important as you know what's showing here at the fair now, but there was not no place for those things to to uh, to uh, be what they are in one sense. So and since that, I think uh, it has the what do you say the the it has the. Um, uh, they are what they are, and they, they don't need to kind of uh, defend it. It, it is, mm. it is valid. But things. now it's in its third year, mm. uh, and uh, it's uh, for mm. those of you that haven't been there. It's uh, uh, you exhibit products from a certain amount of uh, designers. Mm. It's uh, most of the time one-offs yeah. uh, or prototypes, and it's shown for a week, and then at the end of uh, the design week, it's being auctioned off. And it's become quite a nice. I think it takes about three years to establish something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, which no, is but uh, it's think, really nice. I think the, uh, just the, uh, what we did, not just making a show, that we also did the auction, that kind of set the tone that it th this this is things that you can buy mm. and it's it's available mm. because if it was only a, a, a group show, mm. it's it's quite hard to communicate. Okay, what is this? Is it a prototype or are you are you satisfied with it? Mm. But here it's quite obvious that mm. everything that is there are are you know made by very satisfied 
mm. designers, and and it is available to to buy. Mm. So so it's mm. not uh, it's not a question. It's not no. a doubt what it is. Uh, it's going very nice project, mm. and very uh, I also I follow that with big big interest because it's uh, it is very much about. Uh, taking back the power uh, of, of being a designer. I mean, f for so many years, I, I, 10 years ago, um, I, my, uh, my dream was to do a, like a side table like this for Moroso. And I thought, you know, that would, you know, be the most fantastic thing ever. Uh, I'm not interested in, in doing that anymore, uh, but, uh, uh <laughs> uh, but I, can, uh, I can also find great interest in making really, really strange things like uh, wooden birds or uh, useless glass sculptures <laughs> and, uh, and um, you know, things that has no uh, um, uh, typical value or like design value. Uh, and I think that, um, I think we are regaining the power as a designers mm. and, and I think we are entering new roles. Mm. Uh, so I think my view on, on like being a designer in Scandinavia is for the first time in my career and life, very positive. I think it's going to be really, really interesting to be a part of the Scandinavian field because the whole world are looking, looking in, uh, in our direction. Mm. And, uh, and we must also remember that Scandinavian the lifestyle is not about sailboats and uh, blonde furniture and wool textiles and, and um, you know, pottery. <laughs> it's about uh, also uh, we must remember that we are quite um, careful consumers compared to uh, how we consume or people consume other parts in the world. Mm -hmm. That we are um, uh, careful in terms of buying few things and proper things and um, maintaining things, etc. And that's like, uh, I think that's like probably the most important um, value that we are going to export mm -hmm. in the next uh, 50 years. I really like my new 50 years perspective. <laughs> it's not too far, it's 50. <laughs> hey, what do you think, Peter? <laughs> Well, I completely agree, but it's also about shortening the distance between whoever looks and whoever buys and whoever does. Yes. Uh, so it's also the element of authenticity. Yes, it's, it is. It's, it's, the, it's the feeling of if you want to move something, there has to be a passion. There has mm. to be some sense of uh, touching the world in a, in, a yes. in, a, in a mechanism that feels sincere. Mm. Uh, and that's why I like, uh, we all like this experimentation yes. that falls back and forth from you know the the commercial aspects where you have a producer and you know exactly what it is they need but mm. on the other hand you also need to investigate yes. you ne need to investigate without a no necessary end you know mm. it's a it's a it's a world you step into mm. and you tell the story with n nothing to hold it mm. except your own passion yes. and uh, whatever object emerges from that and that story is very potent and i think it if if an expression has to move that is the generic approach it has mm. to be like that mm. because otherwise why trust it mm. why buy into it mm. but how True. important is the uh, the close proximity to production. Uh, I mean, I know you, for example, are very close to the factories that you work with and, and uh, very often travel down there. Uh, how important is that in what you do? Um, for me as a designer, extremely important because I work so close with the factory. I have my development team and um, I'm very, very keen of letting them know that they are a part of my mm development because I wouldn't be anything without these guys. They have the skills and the knowledge mm. that I don't stand for. And um, it's important to remember that as a designer, you're not there by yourself. Mm. There's a team behind you. Mm. In the same way as uh, Fredrik were referring to, I think it's so fantastic that young designers get so self-confident in doing the auction, mm. in doing their own production, because you will get lack of um, confidence if you don't have the audience, if you don't reach out with what you stand for. And it's also quite important because that will influence uh, established mm. designers to actually take nice. a step forward nice. and not just working with the old guidelines that used to mm. be. You try mm. new ways. You want to try and explore new materials and because new... Because we have new eyes and yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we don't and it's do and uh, it's very yeah. nice to kind of, mm. you know... So that kind of collaboration yeah. is uh, also extremely important mm. to mm. continue 
in mm. your design process. Mm. But uh, so, so uh, it, it's important to have production in Scandinavia. Is that yes. important for you too, to to have a closeness to to the production and the factory? Well, I think it's always important. I mean, I mean it, but but it can be on so diff many different levels. I, I mean, uh, if you do bespoke furniture, uh, which is an evolving scene, not just for young designers, mm -hmm. but also uh, in different market segmentations as well. Uh, I completely agree. You you have to sort of uh, be at the workshop. You have to talk with a guy who knows this piece of wood that can predict how it's going to behave, or so so that uh, contact is extremely important. On the other hand, I, uh, we also found that there's there also the element of time, the, the element of speed, how long does it take to do a product, how, how, how do you do it under what circumstances, under what restrictions and possibilities. And, and for us, we had a great experience going actually to the Far East because their notion of time is very different. Mm -hmm. And their way of working was, has changed our view a little bit because we've been working with Scandinavian producers for, for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. and, and that method was different it, because it was very intense. You had uh, an idea, then you went there, then you were at a factory for 10 days. And each morning they would have, you know, uh, they would have done something. So you would draw and then it was there the, the day after which is, is a, a completely different way of working, but it, it felt the energy was extremely high. Mm. So it doesn't have to be necessarily local, mm. but, but the, the contact is essential. I'm thinking uh, in particular, the last 10 years, uh, Swedish uh, production has actually gone up 26%, mm. whereas uh, it hasn't in Denmark, but it's been very active on the producing uh, side. Uh, how do you think the differences are to work uh, as a Danish designer compared to Swedish or Norwegian, is there any major differences today when you work with producers worldwide and distribution is international? Well, as we talked about before, I agree that the, the art of conversation, having the ab being able to have a dialogue is, is fundamental within design and and I think working within Scandinavia even though there are dif you know differences between Sweden Norway and Denmark there are also s certain similarities so you pick up on the cultural differences but, but it's quite easy to go into dialogue uh, whereas if if you move to other quite far destinations th y you have those few meetings you're not really sure even though someone nods you're not actually sure if they're actually nodding as an okay uh, so so you have to try a little bit harder to to sort of uh, understand between the lines what is said and how it's done mm. but but on the other hand that's a challenge it's one of the interesting things mm. it's one of those things that actually give you energy mm. because it's again it's the human aspect mm. it's about getting to that point where you over the design actually feel you click mm. uh, so it's interesting it's yeah. just the processes are not quite similar if you go to the east or mm. you know southern Europe what do you think Frederick it's a small scale production uh, important for for younger designers working today a uh, closeness to it or is it not important no, I think it's very important because uh, the, the bigger the production is I mean the the more you have probably to to reconsider what type of objects you're doing so uh, I, th I think a small small scale then you are able to to test your ideas mm. without uh, any you know major impact on you know environment or economic uh, things mm. like that so mm. i think it's I, I mean both are very important and and as you mentioned before it's you have to have like both sides of the mm. coin to kind of to to get things yeah. rolling mm. so yeah confidence yeah. Yeah. what yeah. do you think andreas no i i, I agree I, I think uh, but again um when we touch uh, when we you know in our discussion, we um, um, there are so many aspects. When once you start discussing it, <laughs> it, uh, it opens up like black holes under you, you know, rapidly because there are so many um, uh, important issues and and different discussions. But uh, I totally agree with Fedek. I think it is very important to. Um, I do some teaching at Konstfak also, and I I, I think. Um, um, it's very important to to help the students, for instance, mm. um, uh, help them to become uh, more self-confident, mm. and 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 to take out their like their their own expression or their mm. personal expression, and I think that you can 
Um, you can, uh, as uh, you were saying, uh, working closely with um, with the industry. Of course, that's also very nice, and there's always a big team. But I think you can you can be more prepared if you have an idea about mm. your, you know, mm. what do I do? Mm. What are these things that mm. I'm doing? How do I like to work? Mm. I think that the, if you hook up with the industry, yeah. it, it could be more defined. Because when I was starting to work by myself, I or, or in the early days also. Um, I spent many years to find out, you know, how um, how persistent shall I be? You know, how far can I go to say, you know, I want to, I want it to be like this because mm. it's so much about being in a position, you mm. know. And if you are like the Buddha legs, you you don't accept anything, you know. <laughs> just say no. That's a very that's like an ideal uh, position to be in. But yeah. for uh, uh, like normal, like average uh, designers yeah. from average Scandinavia. <laughs> it's uh, you have to be like uh, careful and, and and wise and uh, not too fierce mm. and uh, not too um, kind <laughs> in the process. Mm. So I think it's uh, oh Jesus, it's, it's very very complex mm. and and it's so much matter of um, it's so dependent on the person mm. and how your personal abilities. Yeah. You again. were mentioning earlier how the designer's role have changed, and that's not only in Scandinavia, of course, but it was quite interesting hearing the producers saying that Scandinavian designers in particular uh, are very good at communication and PR. Yes. Uh, uh, how, how, I mean, and that, that is something that has changed definitely the last uh, 10 years or maybe five years even, you're sending out their own newsletters, etc. How, how does this new role uh, affect uh, how you work? Do you enjoy that part, uh, taking on the whole task of uh, both design and communication? Or Well, I, w I would say I think you have to think about it a little bit differently. I, I think if, if it's something that feels that it's something you have to do after you've done the design, it feels a little bit <laughs> disconnected, but but if you <laughs> if you kind of have that in your head the whole time, mm. uh, then going back to this element of of, of things being authentic, then mm. the authentic part of the design is the story, mm. and and we also realize that because there's so much design, there's like design all over all the time. So it's mm. it is also about telling the story. You know, mm. it's like you can't really say that a design one design is more true than another mm. part of design. So it's it's. So it's a combination of the sort of the, the choices you do, but also the story that is emittable from the design itself. Mm. And if you can grasp that from an early point and sort of use it to sort of drive your design process forward, then then it doesn't feel very difficult to go into that part. It's something you f you feel as a part of your natural passion, actually. Mm. And 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 I think the producers or whoever you design for are, are quite grateful because it feels uneffortless. You know, it's mm. like it has to be like that. Uh, so, so I don't. I think it's it's a part of what we yeah. do. It's it's the modern role, actually. It is also a way of continuing the dialogue because you yes. have one someone that reflects on what you have done and what you have been working with. So you will finally find out what is right, what is wrong. Mm. How should I continuing this design process? And mm. um, so I think it's still quite important to have mm. the dialogue even after your design work is finished. Mm. But the dialogue, you know, it's like when you go into a design process, it's like you don't know what it's going to look like. There no. might be a thousand good ways to any problem. Mm. And and you, and need you need to meet the users of the product, and that is what you do when you promote your product. You, mm. will, use, you will meet the architect, you will meet the consumer, and so on. So. Mm. But also the dialogue in itself is an index. It's mm, when absolutely. you start, it's, it's, it's that conversation, it's... It's sort of the it's mm. the essence of that conversation that decides it's whether it's going to be a product or not. Mm. It's quite often uh, that you refer to something that has been said in the conversation yes. to your next project, yeah. and you yes. will bring it with you mm. as a mm. reference. Yeah. To it. Andreas, how has that changed since you started out? Uh, the way you communicate and put your own. <laughs> Pack it together. Uh, I, re I, I remember. It's a very nice sentence. Uh, a very interesting sentence. Opening sentence. Uh, no, I when I was in Milan the first time in 2000, um, uh, I brought uh, slides. You, anyone remember slides? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and uh, that was like our press material. <laughs> it made a strong impression on everyone, of course. Uh, no, it has changed. Um, 
But I, I think it has changed in a positive way because it, uh, again, it's, it allows the designers to recapture some of our lost power and um, our main values mm. in, in terms of what we do and what we know. And um, I think that's great. Um, all the new, um, you know, all the new blogs and uh, all the new places where you can show things. The scene uh, again. We have this. this you, you know, we we have this discussed this before. But I mean, the scene showing like um, the smallest strangers project from. Um, um, Student uh, project in from a call, and the next uh, news is a, mil a big re multi billion hotel in Paris. Uh, so the scene has like they have taken away a lot of uh, wallpaper, did this 10 years ago also, and they still do that, or, or any, many other magazines. But I think the boundaries are, um, ta um, uh, as uh, everything has changed mm. to in a, in a, uh, to our advantage. Mm. It's easy to get things out. It's easy to show things, mm. and uh, and uh, of course everything is images. Mm. Uh, we know that, mm. and uh, I think that's quite interesting. Mm. But uh, but I, I don't think that it's like you don't have to be a s really smooth talker, mm. well dressed with. Uh, funny glasses in order to succeed <laughs> in the in the design business but I what are the biggest <laughs> i think it's always <laughs> about uh, it's always about the product mm. uh, and thankfully it's it's always about the product yes but what are the biggest challenges do you see working uh, as a designer in scandinavia today uh, how, how do you see it uh, frederick um that's quite interesting because um for for the moment, I'm quite active, you know, making my own things, showing them, um, selling them, uh, having shows in gallery context and stuff like that. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, mm. with with the, with the internet and mm. and everything, it's really easy to to show your works for the world and mm. and, uh, and most importantly, to to get the feedback mm. yes. and uh, and uh, and to carry on, but. You know, so that is one sense. But for me, it's quite. Um, I'm working quite hard to um, to experiment and to to find my my way of doing certain things. But I haven't really worked with um, manufacturers that much yet. And uh, as you said, it's you don't need to be smart and have the <laughs> uh, funny glasses to no. be able to to uh, connect with no. manufacturers anymore. No. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> because I haven't, and I really, <laughs> I, uh, um, I would like somehow in one day mm. uh, to start work Working with, with manufacturing, mm. because f for me it's not either or. I think mm. it's important to that you, you have both. the both yeah. both ways. Mm. So it could be hard to kind of get that first contact to get in with them, but mm. I don't know. Since when you when you, your work start to be more and more clear and easy to grasp, yeah. then, I, then I think it's going to be... Mm. Mm. What do you fun. think are the biggest challenges working today in, in Scandinavian context? <coughs> well, I, I guess it depends on, on, on where you are. And uh, I, I also think the business is extremely aggressive at the same time. So, mm. so if you're talking from uh, a newly educational aspect, I, w I would say it's... Uh, I would say it's a little bit, I would imagine it a little bit frightening because mm. you have to have a lot of power within yourself mm. to drive yourself. And I, I think also due to the internet and things, I mean, most design brands have a small email address where, it's a, where it says submit design. So, I mean, there's endless amounts of design mm. being sent to all manufacturers all the time. So, so we're back to this element. How do you establish a personal contact? Mm. And that's it's how, how do you get that first foot in the mm. door? That's the whole trick. Mm. And then, like we talked about before, then you have to be able through dialogue and, and also you have to deliver once in a mm. while. Mm. So, so there's a lot of things where you can't really relax mm. you know so it's 
it's all about getting in there and sort of understanding mm. the mechanisms and, and not really leaving it alone mm. uh, in one second. You can't really relax. Mm. You have to be there all the time. I think one of the interesting things that, that happened in Copenhagen is that, that, um, that it, wasn't only, it wasn't only sort of the de design scene. It, it was other elements of creative practice that mm. also emerged. It's like uh, one of our big fortunes was that we, we got to collaborate with a lot of these uh, chefs that were... Mm. Uh, starting to define sort of the culinary scene in, in Scandinavia and, and, and one of the, the interesting things there is that they were extremely passionate and we talked about before their sort of singularities, they're insisting on having their own expression. Mm -hmm. And, and at a certain point, they realize that they also need, they need the space around them to sort of reflect that way of thinking. Mm. And, and, um, and so, so, you know, you, in, in order to get ahead, I think you have to be very open. You can't really say where it's no. going to come from. You know, it's like you, you have to be open and, mm. and quite open-minded generally. Mm -hmm. and, and that does require a certain amount of energy. So yeah. as I would say, you have to stay focused and you have to be open-minded and free-thinking mm -hmm. at the same time. And if you do that, and if you have a powerful sort mm. of uh, uh, commitment, then probably you'll, you'll get a chance at some point. Mm. Uh, to summarize this a bit, uh, we were discussing that it's a very exciting time, at least Andreas was thinking this is an enormously exciting time in, in, uh, in, in Scandinavian in design. In perspective. Yeah, yes. and in the whole design <laughs> perspective. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I also think so. I think it's a very exciting time, uh, what is happening in the whole design mm. industry and the way we can communicate and reach out as well. Um, but but how, how, how do you see the Scandinavian design scene, the most interesting part, and, w and how it will develop in the next uh, couple of years? What will be the most interesting part, do you think, if you allow yourself to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, uh, well, I think it's going to be very diverse. I think, uh, like Fredrik's initiative, um, everything, uh, I mean, um, initiatives like this, um, taking more and more control, small-scale production, um, new brands, new manufacturers uh, emerging um, that are new and in interesting and that represent something new. Mm. Uh, I think... Um, I think the, the Scandinavian confidence is, mm. is getting better. And, and again, I think the whole world, or not the whole world, it's a stu stupid thing to say, but I think... Uh, yeah, well, anyway, the big parts of the world are, are looking at how we live and, 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 and how we consume mm. and how we um, manufacture things. Mm. And I think that's, uh, that's something nice about that. Uh, and it's uh, important to remember that it consumerism is not like you know I mean I mean when you start studying design you get I, at least I got this complex I thought you know Jesus do, what are we going to do with more caravs and more funny side tables and chairs and, and textiles and I realized that if you look at the um, total production worldwide of what we the everything that is everything that is being produced in the world the design goods are still like just a really, really small yeah. part compared to the cheap toys and the cheap furniture and the cheap uh, clothing mm. and the cheap lamps and everything. Mm. And design at its, at its best represents something that is really good, mm. that's something that lasts and that works well, etc. So I think, uh, I, think we, we really, uh, I think the Scandinavians are on a mission and I think <laughs> that it's going to be... Uh, our, the conditions for us yeah. uh, in the field in, in various ways are, are going to be really good. And I think we can, me and Fredrik, uh, we, can continue, we, can, you know, we can still continue to do the, the strange stuff. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and I can work with the uh, companies <laughs> and I can work with the companies. And I think it's going to be really uh, diverse. Mm. What That's do you nice. think, Anja? Long answer. I think that we, I hope that we will see more collaboration between different fields, that the designers will come into um, production to work closer to the architects to see the needs, because then you're gon not going to end up with uh, overproducing things and stuff for the world. So I think and hope that uh, collaboration between different fields, between different um, environments will be more obvious mm. so that you can really fulfill the needs mm. for the product. Mm. 
what do you think, Peter? Well, I have to agree on that. I, I think I think especially the the aspect of longevity, the the element of making design that has that isn't over, uh, you know, in a week that's not made to last for a brief second is is a way of being very responsible in a global context. You know, taking care of resources and thinking carefully mm. about the choices mm. you do as a consumer. Mm. And I think it, uh, I think we basically all agree it's it's a little bit in our nature that you know instead of buying ten, we would rather pay a little bit mm. more and buy one, exactly. and then have it for a, a, a lifetime. Not mm. just uh, from the aspect of resources, but also actually the storytelling mm. about it. It's it's about if you have a beautiful piece of wooden something, whether mm. it's art or whether it's abstract or whether it's actually very functional, mm. it's if it's made well and looks good, then the wear and tear uh, mm. has its own story mm. in it. It's one of those things you pass on through a family. There's this whole tradition of design having that, that sort of mm. connection to mm. real life. And I think that's one of the aspects we're really good at doing here in Scandinavia. Mm. I think we will just naturally continue that process. And then, you know, then it will be round sometimes and square and other times. It's not really important. Mm. If you could pick one thing that you find the most exciting and interesting going on in the Scandinavian design scene, and w what w what would that be? How do you see it? No, um, but that must that has to be like the uh, when when independent designers th that they are taking uh, mm. taking the dirt on their hands uh, and not st uh, to take the the passive role that mm. that we're being more active yeah. and and get things done. But I have to tap into something because that, that you mentioned and that we were talking about the before and, and that's the, the, the global aspect mm. somehow and, and the notion of uh, Scandinavian design mm. and that design, Scandinavian design is influenced by, by you know, design, design, <laughs> I mean, w whether no boundaries uh, and uh, and bo that goes for both ways, I mm -hmm. think. And the notion of Scandinavian design then should be, sorry, uh, on, on the quality, on, on the manufacturing processes, maybe. Mm. Uh, mm. I'm just going to wait until they finish here. <laughs> There, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so we end this on a very positive note, uh, having some very great years ahead of us and also a very interesting <laughs> design scene here and now. Uh, I'm very happy that you could join me here today and uh, thank you so much for, for being here and listening. And I think we give a warm applause to, to the panelists. <laughs>